Hi, we are back again as we continue our series of videos on the theories of child psychology. In our previous video, we discussed one such behavior learning theory called operant conditioning by Skinner that states that the response to a stimulus further acts as a stimulus for the next action to take place. Let us now continue learning behavior patterns explained through two other theories called social learning theory, hierarchy of needs. It is said that imitation is not just the sincerest form of flattery, but is the sincerest form of learning. Let us now discuss this with the social learning theory by Albert Bandura. This theory is thought to be the most complete, clinically useful, and theoretically a sophisticated form of behavior therapy. Bandura agrees with the behaviorists of classical conditioning theory and operant conditioning theory, but adds a few more things to it, like Behavior is learned from the environment through observational learning. But a mediating process or a middle step occurs between what happens around us and how we react. It helps explain how things we experience affect our behavior and responses. For instance, Dia received feedback from her teacher on the math work she submitted, her thoughts about the feedback, her emotional reaction to it, and how she chose to act on it all play a role in determining her response. This response can be one of three things. She feels motivated to do better. She gets upset about not being praised. She seeks help from friends and elders. According to this theory, behavior is influenced by environmental and personal factors, such as cognitive ability and biological events. Whose behaviors do children commonly mirror? In society, children are surrounded by many influential individuals such as parents and siblings, friends in the peer group, cartoon characters from TV, teachers at school and many more. Individuals that are observed are called models. Children observe their models and remember their actions and imitate them. This imitation can happen regardless of whether the behavior suits their gender. However, Various factors increase the likelihood of a child replicating behaviors that align with what society views as appropriate for their gender. Learning through observation or modeling is not an automatic process, but requires cognitive factors. It involves four crucial procedures, namely attention, which is the extent to which the behavior is noticed, retention, which is how well the behavior is remembered, reproduction, is the ability to perform the behavior that the model has just demonstrated. And motivation is based on the reward or punishment received for the procedure leading to the willingness to repeat it. For example, children who grew up watching their parents play sports are more likely to imitate their behaviors and become sports persons themselves. In a dental scenario, let's take an instance of Joe, a six-year-old enthusiastic boy. He accompanied his mother for her dental treatment. The dentist at the clinic allowed Joe to explore the dental clinic and a few instruments while his mother was getting treated. This led him to have a positive attitude towards dental treatment and cooperate for his appointment. Observational learning is of great advantage in the design of treatment areas. Children and adolescents do better when they are treated in open clinics rather than in private cubicles, as observational learning plays an important role in it. The model can be present or audiovisual modeling or filming can also be used as a modeling aid. Like in the case of a young patient, Sanya, who was anxious to visit the dentist. As she waited for her turn, the clinic screen showed happy kids at the dentist. The videos put Sanya to ease as she watched other children getting the treatment done. Let us know the advantages and disadvantages of this theory. Social learning theory is the most sophisticated and explains the most complex behaviors of all the theories. However, it does not completely explain all behaviors, including thoughts and feelings. Moreover, it overemphasizes the environmental factors. The last behavior learning theory is the hierarchy of needs, given by Maslow in the year 1954. He believed that self-actualization theory is the need to understand the totality of a person. The needs are arranged in a hierarchy as they are represented on a pyramid. As one general type of need is satisfied, another higher order will emerge. This theory explains the basic needs of a person, like food and shelter, 
must be met before they can focus on higher needs like friendships and learning. Motivation is always important and can come from avoiding pain, reducing stress or feeling happy. The theory of Maslow's hierarchy of needs may not directly relate to a child's behavior in pediatric dentistry. However, a parent's psychology and attitudes influenced by their socio-economic status can impact a child's oral and dental health and behavior in a dental setting. After all, a hungry child is most unlikely to cooperate on the dental chair. Pop quiz. Learning theories are essential in pediatric dentistry for behavior management. By applying these theories effectively, dentists can create a positive environment, reduce anxiety, and enhance the children's dental experiences. This brings us to the end of this video. We will be back again with videos on psychoanalytical theories. Hope you had fun learning with us. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.